Hey, it's Patrick, and I'm back at you with another mystery comic opening. And, uh, as always, I picked up this comic book Super Value Pack at Ollie's for $5.99, which is a pretty good deal for the comics you usually can expect to get. It says a $20 value, 10 different comics. And what drew me to this set was the Next Generation comic on the back of it, which looks really interesting. So, I think that's by Michael Jan Friedman, but I may be wrong. But, um, anyway, we're going to find out here. Just as soon as I figure out how to open it. <laughs> it looks like this one is taped up really, really well. And I'm going to pull the comics out. Set the bag aside. And we'll start with uh, the one on top. So this is Star Trek The Next Generation Shadowheart. And there's Lieutenant Worf. And it's put out by DC. Um, the back of it has a ad for interview with a vampire. Opens November everywhere, so that should tell you how old this comic book is. If I'm not mistaken, that movie was way back in the 90s. So, this one, Earth 2, this one is 1994. And it's on the old style comic book paper, too. It starts out with some Klingons in a, in a bird of prey. A lot of Klingon head uh, shapes here. The lobster heads. And they get hit and they land on this jungle planet. Star Trek Generations 11 1894. This movie was really a big deal because uh, I mean, it was Kirk and Picard together, and that was the big selling point. And I'm right, it was Michael Jan Friedman. Uh, Tis definitely familiar with Star Trek Next Generation. We've got Worf and his parents and Alexander. Sega Genesis games, Sylvester and Tweety and KG Capers. You know, her hair doesn't look like regulation, but then again, the regulations seem to come and go, depending on what episode of Star Trek you were watching. So, Dr. Crusher and Deanna were, wore their hair any way they wanted to, but then they told Ensign Rowe that she couldn't wear her earring. I never quite understood the dress code and why it seemed to apply to some people and not to others. The artwork in this is really good. It 
Wonder Woman 93. Looks a lot like the Silver Surfer, but it can't be. Unless they're having a Marvel DC crossover. DC Comics Online. And we got an ad for Bon Jovi. 14 Classic Grooves. Bon Jovi Crossroad. Living on a Prayer. Keep the Faith. Wanted Dead or Alive. I definitely had that CD. I probably had that cassette tape, actually. Um... back in the protective sleeve. And the next comic is Doctor Who, and it is a thick one. It is a very thick comic. Put out by Titan Comics. BBC New Adventures with the Eighth Doctor. And there's a little ad on the back. And this is from 2015. The artwork is very bright, kind of pastel-y. Doesn't seem like other Doctor Who comics I've looked at. And it's not the best artwork. It's very simple. After what we just looked at, and now looking at this, it just doesn't. I like the sonic screwdriver effect. And I guess it's maybe supposed to be painterly because she's painting. The other great comics. And final figures and charm bracelets. All the Doctor Who merchandise. Okay, the next comic we have is X Factor, put out by Marvel Comics. And it's about the X-Men. This is a 1993 comic and a protective sleeve. Was a dollar twenty five. Uh, on the back is Zit Fighters from Outer Space. It's a Stridex ad, which I don't know if they still make it or not, but it's uh, for teenagers. It was a it was a uh, pimple medicine, and here is an ad for a movie called Fire in the Sky. This is interesting to me because I used to live in Pine Top, Arizona, which is very close to where that happened, the supposed alien abduction. And the movie, I watched it and I was excited to watch it when it came out. And I was 
head. I believe I was still living there when it came when I watched it. And it had James Garner, I think. Am I right? Yep, James Garner, DB Sweeney, Robert Patrick. Um well anyway, they 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 barely made any references to the the towns. They mentioned Sibiki, I think. Or maybe maybe they mentioned Winslow. I, I but they didn't they just said White Mountain, Arizona. They didn't go into where, you know, Sholo, Pine Top, Lakeside. The towns that you would know if you were from there. Now, here we go back to good artwork again. Good old classic. It's classic now. <laughs> X-Men. Join the Marvel Dream Team. Mysterio. Doc Ock. Of course, Spider-Man. Um, Juggernaut. Wolverine. Cyclops. Uh... Was that Jubilee or um, Meteor Man? The movie opens in March. Um, African American superhero. They always forget about when they're when they're putting out another one like Black Panther, but Meteor Man came out in 1993 and um not to mention spawn and uh oh um blade there's there's been a lot no disrespect to black panther a movie i really enjoyed and but still they just tend to forget about you know, they say the first female-led superhero, and then they'll forget about Catwoman, Elektra, Supergirl, because they're trying to sell a movie. And that kind of annoys me, because, you know, they turn everything into, like, um, identity politics, instead of just saying, here's a good movie to watch. And sometimes they're d being dishonest about the identity politics, too. Granted, Meteor Man was nothing compared to Black Panther. But it doesn't even get acknowledged. So. I like the artwork in this a lot better than more recent stuff. And these look like the old X-Men action figures from the 90s too, which is kind of cool. What is this? Collect all six cars from Crunch and Munch. Hulk, Wolverine, Spider-Man. Oh, that would have been cool to have. And I was, at that time, was graduated from high school and probably not buying comics because I was trying to be a grown-up. And it was only not that long ago that I recently just became fascinated with them again. So... And, you know, allow myself to enjoy the art and the stories. With, there's nothing wrong with that. This is a Marvel Comics motor mouth. The indescribable motor mouth. Makes an awful mess of two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. The British Marvel Universe is born. She's like, bleep me. Hmm. Some baseball cards on the back. Let's see what this is all about. Honey, I blew up the kid. Oh, uh, this is 1992. Because I was still in school. <laughs> so this is British Marvel. Not Union Jack or Captain Britain. There was Nick Fury from the old days, before he became Samuel Jackson. And she says bloody hell and all of that. She swears in every line she has, because I think she's supposed to be like stereotypically British.
Castlevania 4. This is still good artwork, but it's that also that sort of style from the 90s that I was never a huge fan of. Like with giant, giant guns and stuff like that, where every everyone was muscle-bound, even the action figures. It's when all the Star Wars action figures came out, and everyone was like hugely muscled. Death's Head. Motor Mouth. Watch her digitize through space time matrix before the matrix NBA Game Boy. Well, that was interesting. I've, in all honesty, I've never heard of the indescribable motor mouth, but it seems she's a cute superhero. The let me get some coffee here. This is the first hero, Fight for Your Life, put out by Action Lab. And we've seen a lot of these Action Lab comics in these videos. And it looks like it's going to be black and white, which I'm not a fan of. The artwork in this is pretty lame, too. Um, no, it's colored, but it's barely... It's very, very simple. Um... Very minimalist. Not, not a big. I mean, I guess I can appreciate it in the right mood, but it's to me. It, I don't know. It just seems like a like it's rushed. When I mean, you look at the other artwork and some of the other comics, and then you look at this. Yeah, this one is not really anything to write home about. Harold Lovecraft and Tesla. And before those things, well, then again, this is this is probably recent. So, um, 2015. Yeah, that's when all of the. Tesla, Lovecraft, and all that stuff became popular again. Especially, like, Lovecraft, and then we're doing a complete circle of loving it and hating it all over again. Next is Decoy. Hmm. May 1999. Um, never seen this one. The artwork's slightly better. At least there seems to be more work put into it. The pages are very thick with this matte finish. Sometimes I open these comics and I hear it crack and I can tell it's never been opened until now. And some of these comics make the cut. I give them a forever home. <laughs> and all comics want is to be read. And then some of the artwork in this is kind of good. I like it. And we got an ad for the Victorian, a comic I really like. And 
some posters, artwork. Penny Farthing Press. Cool. Uh, next, we got a Victorian. I love Victorians. They're just fun to look at. The Victorian Historian Five Acts Self Immolation. This is from 2001. I've got a nice collection of Victorians from the from doing these videos. So how to put them all together? See if I have a whole story. This is the kind of details I like where they, where, you know, they have a photograph of what's the thing that, but it's, it fits. It just fits. And we get some black and white art prints. Courtney Huddleston. Very cool. Kind of reminds you a little bit of, um, uh, what's it called? I, um, <laughs> I was about to say something and I forgot the name of the game in the video game. Uh, Bio, whatever. Um, the one that's all like the steampunk game. Oh boy, my brain. I, I just got off a of work day. Oh, what do we have here? Marvel's The Vision. And it looks kind of like WandaVision. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? Okay, this is... Mun Munchkin Guest Artist Editions. How cool is this? Go home, socket lovers. And I don't know if this is Wanda and Vision. This is Vision and someone else. Agent Carter. I love that show. I need to figure out what this story is about. I think, is that Tony Stark? In this comic? Guardians of the Galaxy. Invincible Iron Man number six. There's a sticker. little risque art in the comic.
And it has a lot of animal violence, which I'm not a fan of. But I am curious as to what this is about. I might set this one aside. Um, this is Miraculous by Action Lab. Another one I've never heard of. And it says Gamer. I guess that's the name of the character. Oh, wow. Look at this artwork. It looks like a Pixar movie. Wow. That's something else. I've never seen a comic with artwork like this. Interesting. Probably easier once you get all the everything rendered. Probably easier to do the artwork than drawing. It's interesting, but it gets tiresome quickly. You, you see that you miss the, the hand-drawn artwork. It's a long, long comic. This is really long. And that's you know the interesting one. Look how long that is. I mean that's like a graphic novel. Wow. Finally we have a copy of the Uncanny X-Men dollar twenty-five from the nineties. I bet it's ninety-four. Super Mario Brothers. No, this has gotta be ninety-two or ninety-three because I was in high school when that came out. 93, yep. Hmm. That's gotta be Storm. Neon Nerds. Oh, boy. And look at that Willy Wonka looks like Gene Wilder. Should have always stayed as Gene Wilder. I did not. I was not a fan of the Johnny Depp one in any way, shape, form, or manner. Skybox. The first CD ROM game in a cartridge. Flashback.
Deadpool. Early Deadpool. This is a special section here. Old Thor. Tiny Toon Adventures. And it's Colossus. Kitty Pride. That's it. That is my comic book video for today. And I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, I'm going to set this vision one aside and look at it in greater detail. It's just really interesting, and I was a big fan of WandaVision. So, alright. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will be back again soon. Bye.